Welcome to another video explaining the universe using the particle model. Well, today's video is about the canal ray tube. This is part one and talks about the electrostatic deflection. It turns out that in 1886, Eugen Goldstein was the one who demonstrated the uh, canal ray tube. This tube demonstrates that besides the cathode rays, which are essentially electrons, there is another stream that travels in the opposite direction from the electron flow. In fact, these are highly par positively charged protons, highly charged protons, producing a reddish light in the upper part of the tube, while in the lower part, in the, in the, the usual green emission of electrons can be seen when they hit a glass wall. Apparently, when these highly charged protons hit the uh, glass wall, they emit a green light, whereas the electrons emit a reddish light. The electrons in the lower part of the tube can be deflected by a magnetic field. That is, the electrons can be deflected by a magnetic field, and we saw that in the cathode ray tube. But the canal rays, which are these positively charged protons, cannot, almost, not. Goldstein would, could not explain this phenomenon, and it took 12 years before Goldstein's paper was published. Now here's a view, this is a link to a description of Goldstein's work, and here it shows a picture of this tube. It's in a vertical position, and the bottom part is the electron hitting glass in uh, giving you a green glow, and then the upper part are the protons hitting the glass, giving a red glow. Very often, though, you see most tubes uh, displayed like this. Uh, this is a connection I had did not investigate, but you can see the tube is made in two parts. Okay, this is the setup of the tube, and this uh, slide is from this uh, link. And of course, you have uh, initially a tube uh, with a narrowing neck, and then a, a, another part of the, a larger part of the tube. And this is meant to separate this space, which is generally free of the gas, uh, keeping the gas confined in this area. There's an anode here, a positive anode to the left, and a cathode to the right. The unique setup here is that the cathode not only fills this side to block the gases, but there's holes, or canals, if you will, allowing the protons to flow through. And as usual, you have a high voltage, high voltage uh, DC source with the negative side tied to the cathode and the positive side to the electrode, showing that you have electron flow in this direction. That's the setup. Uh, a residual gas molecules in here, uh, kept in this section of the tube. Okay, and so this is another uh, slide from the same thing, and, and I know it's hard to see, but there's a spot right here where one of these gas modules has split into, well, it's, it splits into a, a, a positive ion here and an electron. Uh, the, one of the electrons goes this way. The other electron is the original one, supposedly going that way. So each gas molecule that is split is, uh, has two electrons moving towards the anode, and here this is a positive proton, which is flowing this way towards the cathode. The, uh, the positive uh, 
proton being attracted to negative uh, being repelled uh, by the positive. So that's, that's what happens. It splits and you get electron flow this way, proton flow that way. Okay, and so uh, Wilhelm Wien, in, some years later, and I didn't record that, uh, added, extended this and added a, a plate with a positive charge on top and a negative charge in the bottom. And he showed that these uh, protons, positively charged protons, bent. Now, he did something different. He only had one canal. And, and, and therefore, he could deflect, could only have one stream. Doesn't show you, I didn't learn how they see this. Uh, there, uh, you know, a, uh, <coughs> a red glow is one way, but that's not going to show you the path. So uh, they probably had to have phosphor phosphorescent material in here that when it hit, it would uh, glow and you can see the path. Uh, but that's not shown. But clearly, the positive plate is repelling the positive proton. The negative plate is attracting, and, and a clear explanation of how that works in the standard explanation. Well, the particle explanation, of course, is different. Uh, the electrons are, in the particle model, uh, we, we call them G1 particles. They flow from the negative terminal of the battery to the cathode, to the anode, and back again. The G1s move at high speed. They move at high speed around here and hit the gas molecules and knock them apart, releasing an electron or another G1. And what's left is a positive ion. Now, the previous slide talked about protons. Uh, <coughs> Depends on what gas you use, you could end up with something even larger. But you, but you knock an electron loose and you're left with a positive ion, that is, the nucleus with whatever remaining orbitals it has. So let's look into this a little bit clearer. I'll, I'm going to blow this up and I just explain how you have a high speed flow this way. Here's a, a, a G1 particle hitting a gas, and it splits this particle, which was made up of the ion here, this is the ion, and the extra electron, so you had, had up, end up with one electron, one G1 particle this way, one and one positive ion that way, and an excess electron this way, or G1 particles. Well, what happens, of course, in the particle model is it is a charge. It's not plus and minus. The, uh, this plus is not attracted to here because of charge, because the G1 particle doesn't have charge itself. But what, does, what can get charged is this negative plate. You have, because it's a high voltage, you have a lot of G1s flowing here, and they can get trapped here. And most, many of them still flow this way, and a few get trapped here. So this plate has an excess number of G1s. This has fewer number of G1s, setting up a, a G2 gravity field this way, which I called F2. By the way, this is a case where they don't show, don't show EMF, but very often from positive to negative, they often show that there's a electric force going this way. And it, that's the way it happens in the particle model. The G2 gravity or F2 force is in the same direction as the EMF force. And it's the F2 force that pushes the positive ion towards the uh, uh, negative plate and over to here. That's the particle model explanation. And if you want to show deflection, you got the same thing all over again. You got G1 particles flowing this, extra charge, a little bit of extra here, but that differential sets up a F2 force in this direction, causing them to bend in that direction. Straightforward explanation, almost identical to the standard model, only 
the particle model uses G2 gravity, <coughs> while the standard model uses charge. Now this is a slide I used from last time, and it actually shows an alpha particle. Alpha particles, two protons and two neutrons, and being deflected by an electric field. And that's what was shown there. And this was the particle model explanation. Again, you need this G2 gravity or the net F2 force in this direction to push the particles down. Well, it's interesting that in the canal ray tube, in part two, I'm going to talk about magnetic deflection, not electrostatic. In, in the, uh, this is a repeat of my first slide. The electrons in the lower part of the tube can be deflected by a magnetic field. The electrons can, but the canal raised almost not. Interesting comment, and I intend to cover that next time in part two of the canal ray tube. My name is Bob D. Hilster, and I am your particle model guru. Tune in next time when I'll explain more of the universe using the particle model. Thank you for your attention.